God, I give you the praise. I stand before you today. I can celebrate that I stand in your perfect righteousness. I can celebrate today that all my sins were erased because you said they won't even be mentioned. That's the power of this covenant. Come on. Sometimes we go rehearsing the sins of our past. But guess what? God in heaven has erased them all through the power of the blood. Stand on the truth of it today. Stand on the truth of it today that under the blood, none of that stuff exists. Lord, I give you the praise. It is what the king says it is. It is what the king says it is. Lord, I give you the praise. Lord, I give you the praise. We celebrate you in this place today. We celebrate you in this place today. Lord, I give you the praise. I celebrate you today because my righteousness is of you. Lord, I give you the praise. give you the praise in this place, Lord God. Come on. Come on. Come on. Lord, I pray everyone in here can see themselves how you see them. God has thought enough of us to make us of his own species. to put white garments on us and to throw a crown on our heads and to sit us up there with Jesus. That is the highest of honors. Lord, I give you the praise. So today I'm going to be speaking from the subject of the table of nations and the will of God. The table of nations and the will of God. And one of the main portions of scripture uh, for this text is going to be in the book of Isaiah. Lord, I give you the praise. It's going to be in the book of Isaiah. I want to say that's chapter 21. Let me pull my Bible up here. And I'm getting ready to fall. So a lot of the heart of what I'm going to be talking about is, is, is in Isaiah 21. Now, there are other things that the Lord has given me on this subject. And so I'm just going to enter into a flow and... Um, you're going to receive exactly what he has for you today. Amen. Okay. <clears throat> so when we start talking about the table of nations, really the subject is how did we get to where we are today with all of the nations that we have? And how do we progress through time with nations rising and falling? Lord, I give you the praise. World ruling kingdoms rising and falling. And we're also going to look at the, how the will of God impacts nations. God is truly king of the earth. The earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof, and they that dwell therein. So when God gets ready to exalt a nation, and I want to go ahead and pull up a few verses here. Lord, I give you the praise. When God gets ready to exalt a nation, and you can pull up, Daniel, here, let's see. He begins by releasing a principality. Lord, I give you the praise. Daniel 
Daniel chapter 10, you can pull that up, Dominion. I want to give you the praise. Verse 20. Now, the Bible talks about essentially five world ruling kingdoms. And again, these kingdoms are unique in that their impact is essentially worldwide. Um, and when I say this, let me qualify it. When I say world ruling, from the perspective of um, Daniel chapter 2 with Daniel's, uh, Nebuchadnezzar's dream, where he sees the head of gold, the arms of silver, the belly and thighs of brass, and then he sees the iron, and then you get down to the feet, and it's iron and clay. Then he begins to see the stone that comes out, destroys the feet, and then all of the gold, the silver, the bronze, the iron, and the iron and clay mixed are all taken away by the wind. Those are five world ruling kingdoms prophesied about in Daniel chapter two. Now, that was Nebuchadnezzar's dream that God gave to him, but Daniel would also receive the same revelation essentially. Daniel sees it as a lion with eagle's wings and then he sees a bear and then he sees a leopard with four wings then he sees a beast with ten horns. And then, of course, um, he sees another little horn come up, and it destroys three of the ten horns, which is essentially what we call the Great Tribulation, where a third of men is killed. He kills three of the ten horns, which is really the army of the beast fighting against itself. And then you have the son of God coming on the scene and given power over the entirety of the earth. Five world ruling kingdoms. When this revelation was revealed to Daniel, he said, God, you're the one who changes the times and the seasons. Wisdom and might is yours. God can remove world ruling kingdoms. Kingdoms with such impact that not even the beast of the field can escape the shadow of these kingdoms. Anywhere you go on the earth, that kingdom will have its dominion manifested. That's the kind of power that Babylon actually walked in. And God, again, is able to remove those kingdoms, to literally tear them out of the root and establish another. Now, when God gets ready to do that, and this is what we have to understand, when God gets ready to switch nations, to remove one world power and to replace it with another world power, one of the things that he do is, one, when he gets ready to establish a nation, he releases a principality. When he gets ready to remove a nation, he removes the principality. Once the principality falls, then the men of the nation are weakened. So when God gets ready to destroy a nation, he removes the power behind the nation. The demonic power behind the nation. See, when those wars are fought, for example, when you go from the transition of the kingdom of Persia to the kingdom of Grecia, a principality had to be removed first. So when the, for example, the prince of Persia is the demon power behind the kingdom of Persia. Those spirits give power to their uh, to those that are in subjugation to them. You know how it's like when, when, when Joshua uh, was fighting 
and he prayed that prayer, let the sun stand still. We talked about this a few weeks ago. The Bible said God rained hailstones down and killed more than the children of Israel did. That is the kind of power that demon powers have when they work and fight with armies. You're not just fighting against an army. You are fighting against a principality ruling over an army. And whoever has the principality with them, that army prevails. So when we look at this verse in Daniel chapter 10, now again, God is the one who is sovereign over, I'll remove a principality. See, when God says, okay, I want Persia to come to power, I'll release a principality of Persia. I'll remove the principality of Babylon. It's kind of like when Jesus gets ready to come on the scene, what does the Bible say that he does to Satan? He sends down an angel with a chain and they drag him off and lock him into the bottomless pit for a thousand years. They lock him away. That is what God, and now that's the most powerful demon. That is what God does when he gets ready to change times and seasons. See, what God is giving us today is the ability to go behind the scenes and see, and truly, even when they fought those wars, they were not wrestling with flesh and blood. There was a demon power operating through and with those armies. Think about the magicians, Janus and Jamboree, when they, Janus and Jamboree, when they were coming against Moses, trying to keep uh, Pharaoh in that position of being hardened against Israel. He threw down his cane or his rod and it turned into a serpent. They threw, down, they threw down theirs and it turned into a serpent. That power was trying to get Pharaoh to stay in his hardened position against Israel. I'm not letting them go. Why do I need to respect your God? We got demon powers over here too. So when Moses threw down his rod, the demon power of that land manifested what? A, a serpent to fight against Moses' rod. But of course, the rod of Moses, that serpent ate their serpents. Are you hearing what I'm saying? God is always, his power always prevails over that of the, de of the demonic. Lord, I give you the praise. That's why you got to know what power is fighting for you. Did you hear what I said? Are you hearing what I said? This, the power of God eats snakes of the demonic. Did you hear what I just said? Or that situation where the ark of God is brought into the house of Dagon, the god of the Philistines, and when they set that ark there, Dagon is on his face when they come down up, up in there in the morning. Do you hear what I'm saying? Demon powers have to bow to the power of God. Every knee will bow and every tongue will confess to God. Guess what? Satan has to bow to God. And every single one of those one-third angels have to bow. Lord, I give you the praise. So they go in there in the morning. Dagon is on his face. They pick him back up. They leave out. Dagon, come back the next time. Dagon's head is off and his, arm, and his hands are broken off. Did you hear what I just said? He, not, he takes the control and power of the devil. He takes the control manifested in the head. Whatever influence he had, God takes that control. And he breaks off the hands. That's why Jesus said, I give you power over all power of the enemy. Did you hear what I said? Whatever it is you, they think they can do to you, I will give you the power to stop their power. So if they want to manifest a sickness, you stand in the authority that I've given you and you take away their power to manifest sickness. If they want to manifest a prayerless life, you come in the name of Jesus and rebuke that prayerless devil and then you continue and receive the strength and ability and desire to seek God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We have power over their power. Lord, I give you the praise. So in Daniel chapter 10, Lord, I give you the praise. Verse 20 says this, and then he said, knowest thou therefore where I come unto thee? Now I will return and fight with the prince of Persia and Michael actually uh, helped him to prevail against the prince of Persia. This angel was retained from coming to Daniel. And when I am gone forth, the prince of Grecia shall come. Now, see, in the realm of the spirit, what happened? This angel 
would go and fight against the prince of Persia. That is when Persia lost its power to stand. When that demon principality is taken off of the scene, Persia loses its power to stand. And now when Grecia gets ready to come on the scene, it's not just fighting. You're not just fighting the Grecian army. You're fighting against the principality. Lord, I give you the praise. Think about the supernatural power manifested when, um, when Job, the devil came against Job. Fire falling from heaven. Wind smiting the, the house, causing it to come down and kill those children. Are you hearing what I'm saying? See, it's not just, it's not just, a, and let's look at this situation here. Let's go ahead and look at it. I want to show it to you. See, it's not just those men that he fought against or those men that came against the servants of Job. Lord, I give you the praise. Because we think, oh, well, the Sabians, they just decided to come up against me one day. Now, it's more than the Sabians. It's more than the Sabians. See, we, again, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Lord, I give you the praise. We got to understand that some of these wars are spiritual. Lord, I give you the praise. We got to go in the realm of the spirit and see what's, what's going on and what's trying to come against us. Lord, I give you the praise. So he says this again in verse 12. The Lord said unto Satan, Behold, yeah, all he hath is in thy power, but upon himself put not forth thine hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. And in a day where his sons and his daughters were eating and drinking and wine in his eldest brother's house, there came a messenger unto Job and said, Thy oxen were plowing and the donkeys were feeding beside them. And the Sabians fell upon them and took them away. Yeah, they have slain thine servants with the edge of the sword, and only am I, I am only, only am I escaped to tell you. The Sabians had a demon power with them. See, when Abraham won, fighting against those kings, he had a little over 300 trained servants. But he prevailed against kings of nations. Because God was with him. He had a power fighting with him. Lord, I give you the praise. So God says, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. He's, he's the power behind it. Lord, I give you the praise. So we see the Sabians, they're prevailing. Lord, I give you the praise. Let's see. Also in that chapter, if I go down a few verses... Look at verse 16, which is after 15. While I was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The fire of God is fallen from heaven and hath burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them. And I only am escaped to tell thee. Again, who was the power behind that fire? It was a demon power. So again, when I say principalities, or when I say things like, I'll go back in Daniel 10 and fight against the prince of Persia, and when, I'm gone, the, when, and when I've gone forth, the prince of Grecia shall come. God made a transition in the kingdoms by dealing with the principality behind the kingdoms. The armies lose power when the principality is taken. Lord, I give you the praise. Therefore, when Persia would fight against Grecia, they had to come to a place of realizing the principality that was helping me is gone. They lost. It's like Samson when he wist not that the presence of the Lord had departed from him. Here he is, a single man, able to fight the Philistines. And then all of a sudden, because of his transgression, because he allowed his hair to be cut, the razor to come upon his head, breaking that vow, the power that helped him to prevail over the Philistines had departed. They were successful in removing the power that helped Samson to succeed. So you got to watch the devil. He's going to attack the power that helps you to succeed. He's going to always come at you through the covenant. 
Because he know if I can remove the power, I got you. Lord, I give you the praise. That's that whole concept of bringing seven other spirits more wicked. Lord, I give you the praise. Don't let the devil ever come by your house and find it empty. Because you didn't kick the Holy Ghost out because you wanted what you wanted. Lord, I give you the praise. They can fight against you and prevail. And that's where bondages begin to happen. Lord, I give you the praise. Enough of that point. Lord, I thank you for this. So again, when God gets ready to change kingdoms, he begins to deal with the principalities and powers of the kingdoms. And he is also responsible for releasing principalities. And again, when those principalities are fighting for whatever army they are fighting for and with, they bring their supernatural power with them. Lord, I give you the praise. So you're not just fighting against mere men, but you're fighting against strong demonic power. Now, when we start talking about God's will and this table of nations, how do we get here on today? Lord, I give you the praise. Turn your Bibles to the book of Genesis. I want to show you here in Genesis the will of God. I had a good time with this word this week because I really got to see God's word, God's will in a whole new light. Your Bible, even though those men who gave us these words saw through a glass darkly, contains revelation of God's will. What do I mean when I say that? That which God has predetermined when we start talking about predestination. Therefore, when I pick up my Bible and I see nations in my Bible, I see God's will. Those words in your Bible concerning nations have the power to destroy nations, lift up nations, prosper nations. God gives us in our Bibles a microcosm of his full plan. I'll give you a piece of it and let you see it. Jesus said, heaven and earth will pass away for my words fail. God's words fail. His words will come to pass. Prophecy says, behold, your king is coming. Shout. <laughs> Jesus tell those people when they want the people to shut up. If you were to shut up, the very stones will begin to cry out. Why is that? Because God wrote it in his word that they was going to shout. They were going to praise their king. And he was going to be sitting on the donkey and the cold and all of those things. The scripture says that they were going to shout. For those people to try to hold their peace before God's word fell, even the stones will cry out. Lord, I give you the praise. God, by his supernatural power, would even cause stones to cry out. Now, those people are going to cry out because God said that they would. I want you to pay attention to the fact that his will dictated their praise. These same people would crucify him. His will dictated the fact that they wanted to kill him. According to the Passover, the whole congregation will kill the Passover in the evening. Sun and moon, sun getting dark. In the middle of the day, 6 to the ninth hour, 12 to 3 p.m. Because God said the congregation would kill it in the e evening. Pilate said, I'm innocent of this man's blood. And the people said, his blood be on us. Crucify him. And of course, God had the city destroyed by the Romans. 
around 70 AD, fulfilling what he said to Daniel. The people of the prince would come and they would destroy the city. Lord, I give you the praise. Sanctuary as well. Lord, I give you the praise. What am I talking about? The microcosm of God's will. Lord, I give you the praise. Let me pick that, look that verse up right quick. I want to read it to you. You don't have to go there, but I'll just give it to you before I go back to Genesis 3. Lord, I give you the praise. I give you the praise. And he can't go there if he wanted. Lord, I give you the praise. How could Jesus say some of the things that he said? He looked at the, he looked at the temple and said, there would not be not left one stone upon another. How did he know that? He had access to the will of God. He could see that God wrote these words. I'm trying to tell you how powerful your Bible is. If you want to know what God is planning and what is absolutely going to happen, look at your Bible. Look at what's written on the pages. Lord, I give you the praise. <laughs> and you will see the things that he has written and how they come to pass. Lord, I give you the praise. So it says this, Daniel 9, chapter uh, 9, verse 26. Lord, I give you the praise. Lord, I give you the praise. It says, after three score in two weeks. Now, all of that's going to summate to the 483 years to the Son of God's crucifixion from the time the commandment is given to build and to restore Jerusalem. So he says, um, I want to give you the praise. It's, it says, after the three score in two weeks, the Messiah shall be cut off but not for himself, he was innocent, and the people of the prince shall come and destroy the city and the sanctuary. And the end thereof shall be with the flood until the end of the war of desolations are determined. That temple was destroyed and is still not a temple in Jerusalem right now. But Daniel saw it. Those conversations that Daniel was having, those dreams and these visions and these angelic visitations to say, this is what's going to happen. Those were excerpts of the scriptures God have in heaven with his whole plan for the earth. That controls that changes that manipulates it it completely reigns over everything even our thoughts Lord I give you the praise God knew it was going to be in their hearts to destroy the sanctuary they didn't leave it He also knew in his heart that the Antichrist wouldn't destroy the sanctuary. But he's going to cause desolation to come over the city. That's written in his book, in his will. And we can see it. Lord, I give you the praise. Let me go back to Genesis 3 now. I ain't going to be with you too much longer, I know. I'm just showing you the wisdom of God and, and the transition of kingdoms and how his will manipulates and controls everything. I mean, it's, it's written in the book. It's, if, if it's written in the book, it's going to be. 
I can with certainty say America is going to decline morally. Why? Because he said, you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. Jesus spoke that out of his mouth. I can say that with, without, with absolute certainty. I can look at uh, Mystery Babylon. I can see uh, the city of Tyre and how it's going to be exalted and it's how it's going to be a merchant city and, and how eventually the same uh, ten horns that helped to establish it will come and destroy it. How do I know that? The will of God. I get a microcosm of it right here in this book. Absolute certainty. I want to give you the praise. Let's look at the will of God here. This is a beautiful thing. I'm not going to keep you much longer. Genesis chapter 3. And we go down to, Lord, I give you the praise. Verse 15. Now, this is God's judgment to the devil who possessed the snake. The snake's judgment was to eat dirt and that you're cursed above all cattle and all the beasts of the field. So the species of the snake, the snake itself was judged because of its role in the transgression and fall of man. Now think about that. God actually spoke to the snake and judged it. How many of you know God judges animals? Did you hear what I just said? God speaks to and judges animals. Lord, I give you the praise. So now he begins to speak to the devil and he says, I will put enmity or hostility between thee and the woman. The woman is revealed ultimately to be elect Israel. And think about this. If there is enmity, they are contrary to one another. God always has an elect people among Israel. And that election hates the devil. Despises everything that he represents. And the devil hates that woman. They're contrary one to another. Lord, I give you the praise. And so he says, I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed. Now, the seed of the devil is wicked men. Her seed is Jesus Christ. It shall bruise thy head. Jesus is going to be responsible for destroying the devil and the entirety of his kingdom through judging them. Sit thou in my right hand till thy enemies become thy footstool. He's going to sit at God's right hand and he's going to cast judgment on the fullness of the demonic realm, crushing the head of the serpent. And thou shalt bruise his heel. In other words, when Jesus has completed his task of destroying all of the demonic realm, and judging all wicked men, he would have served his purpose for being at God's right hand. Well, what is the purpose? Till I make your enemies your footstool. Your purpose for sitting at my right hand is to crush and to bring to judgment all wickedness. That's why we will all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. He is responsible for bringing the fullness of the demonic realm into judgment. Lord, I give you the praise. So there is an appointed time for him being seated at the right hand of the Father. How many of you know that? Amen. Amen. Not everybody raised their hand. <laughs> Let me show you this right quick, and then I'll try to get you to the end here. I hope you're enjoying this Bible study, amen. 
Lord, I give you the praise. I give you the praise. First Corinthians chapter 15. What are we talking about now? Jesus' purpose for being at the right hand. It, there's a time limit on it and it's a purpose. There's a purpose for it. What is that purpose? Till your enemies be made your footstool. Lord, I give you the praise. We need to understand this. Yeah. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 22. As in Adam all die. How many of you know death came upon all men? because of what Adam did. Every single one of us experienced death because of what Adam did. Even so, Christ, in Christ, shall all be made alive. How many of you know it's through Jesus every single person is going to be raised from the dead? The wicked, too. How are the wicked going to be judged at his judgment seat if they don't get up out of the grave? Adam killed everybody. Jesus is going to stand up and speak and everybody that's in graves are going to come out and they're going to go from, they're going to either experience the resurrection of life where they enter the new heaven and new earth or they're going to experience the resurrection of damnation which they get cast into the lake of fire. Jesus is going to raise every single person that's dead from the grave. Lord, I give you the praise. All right. Verse 22. But every man in his own order, there's an order to the resurrection. This is a doctrine that everybody should be getting themselves familiar with. It's called the doctrine of resurrection and the dispensations of when they happen. Every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits. That was a resurrection when Jesus got up from the grave. Only the saints experienced that. That was a partial resurrection. Therefore, people like Cain is still in his grave. And whoever else was wicked that God decided to, to destroy throughout the ages. All of those people are still in their graves. But the first fruits rose when Jesus rose from the dead. And afterward, afterward, what's this next resurrection? They that are Christ at his coming. Now we're talking again about, now there is a partial resurrection when Jesus come to reign on earth for a thousand years, but we're talking about when he come at the last time to judge everybody. Sheeps and goats of Matthew chapter 25 and they're all standing before him where of course every knee will bow and every tongue will confess amen then he says then the end comes oh an end is coming when he shall have delivered up the kingdom of God even the father delivered up the kingdom to God, deliver the kingdom up to God, even the father, when he shall put down all rule and all authority, and then he qualifies it with this verse, he must reign until he put all his enemies where? Under his feet. He must reign till he put all enemies under his feet. Your purpose, son, for sitting at my right hand is to destroy all wickedness, to bring it all to judgment. You are my judge. Okay. I was explaining there again when I said that, the bruising of the feet of, the, of Jesus. See, that foot that's going to destroy everybody is no longer needed when you've judged everybody. All right, Genesis 11, and this is where we'll close. I know, I know. This is the last point. 
Last point. Genesis chapter 11. Table of nations, the will of God. You're right. This is after the flood. And at this time, the Bible says the whole earth was one. And there was one language and one speech. Imagine that. Everybody spoke the same language. Right now, if you try to travel the world, you better have your translator app ready. You can't even go throughout all Baton Rouge without having your translator app ready. Amen. Where all these languages come from. Amen. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east, they found a plain in the land of Shinar and dwelt there. And it came to pass, they said to one another, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And brick for stone and slime had they for mortar. So let's make some bricks. Let's make some slime for some mortar. We're going to build something. And they said, let us build a city and a tower. We want a city and a tower. Whose top may reach unto heaven and let us make a name. Lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men built it. And the Lord said, behold, this people is one. Every single person on the face of the earth is one. And they all have one language. And he said, this is what they begin to do. And he says, now nothing will be restrained from them that they have imagined to do. God could not allow this to prevail. Why? Because he said in the beginning, I'm going to have two men of people. What did he say? There's going to be a woman. And she's going to hate the devil. And not only that, she's going to have a seed. And there's going to be enmity between her seed and his, and his seed. Lord, I give you the praise. Jesus and the wicked men that operate in the demonic. These people wanted to be one. God said, I can't suffer you to be one. Because my will says there are at least two. So he comes down, and the Bible says he confounds their language. I'm going to give you all kind of different languages. And break them up from being able to communicate with one another to continue to build the city and the tower which they desired to build. See, God would not have all the earth operating off of their imaginations. God's kingdom prevails over the imaginations of men. And God has discerned, decided in his counsel that there would be nations in the earth. He already gave a foreshadow of it saying there's going to be some enmity between these two. They're not going to agree whatsoever. How can two walk except they be agreed? They can't. They can't. So I'm going to sever a people. What do you have? Who do you have being introduced at the end of Genesis 11? Abraham. You go down at the end of this chapter. Who do you have being introduced? Abraham. Who is he? The father of the Jews. Who is he? The father of the woman that's supposed to hate the devil. Lord, I give you the praise. He's all of our fathers if we're children of faith, but he's also the father of those elect Jews. So God frustrates their imagination. Let me tell you something, and let me go and bring this down in layman terms. Have you ever wanted to do something and it didn't work and you felt like something was fighting you and stopping you from doing it? Are you hearing what I'm saying? I remember being in the world, and I would, be, I would be dating a young lady here or there. And I would do everything in my power to make this thing work. But it would not work. Why? It wasn't God's will. He had a help meet for me. And he said, I, I have a work for you to do. 
And I chose the person who you're supposed to be with. And so even though you imagine yourself being with them, I have another plan and purpose for you. Do you hear what I'm saying? She can testify to the same thing. As much as you think and want something to work out, it's not going to work because it's contrary to his will. And if he has to come down and look at what you are building and then confound languages so that he can break off the thing that you plan, he will do that. And that's how he also manipulates nations. He look down at cities and see what they building. Then he look at his will and say, nope, it don't line up. That's where his supernatural power begins to intervene. Lord, I give you the praise. That's why the devil couldn't take you out when he wanted to. That's why when the death angel came to me personally, God came and said, it's not your time yet. Lord, I give you the praise. He looked at his will and he saw me preaching down the road and he said, you can't kill him. I have a work for him to do. And many of you have the same testimonies. I've heard them in this house where the devil would have killed you years ago and you would not have done all the wonderful works of God that you had done all the way up to this day if he was successful in killing you. You are what you are. You hear because the Lord stopped the devil's plan. Lord, I give you the praise. I give you the praise. I want to show you one more thing. Lord, I give you the praise. Some of you. Some of you may wonder Why God allowed it to happen to me then? Come on now. Come on now. Let's look at Rome. let's look at Hebrews 5 and 2. Lord, I give you the praise. Why did God allow it to happen to me? I can tell you personally, everything that God has allowed me to go through has given me a wisdom and a compassion that I would not have had except I've gone through it. Because guess what? Sometimes if you didn't experience it, you may be a little cold about it. You may not understand it. But if you've been there, you touched what they touched, you experienced what they experienced, it creates in us in many regards a compassion. That's not to say you can't empathize, because you can even if you don't experience it. And you can genuinely be sorrow, sorrowful. God can work that in you. But it's, 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 it's nowhere near like I've been there and did that, done that. I, I was there. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I know what it's like to be homeless. See, if you was actually homeless, you're going to have a perspective of when you get ready to touch homelessness. There's going to be a compassion there. When you know that God brought you out, you're going to remember the struggle. I couldn't find toothpaste. I had to, I had to eat out of trash cans. I, I remember days when nobody had mercy on me. They all looked at me like I was the scum of the earth, and I was hungering for days and nights. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I remember those days. Let's look at verse 1, and then we'll read verse 2. Thank you for pulling it up. Why did God let it happen? One, you gain a wisdom from it. You need to be happy that he didn't let it kill you. Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. I know what it's like to be in the world and you having all your fun and games and then somebody give you a disease. Mine was curable. But I was there. God let me feel that. I needed to know that. You can be destroyed too, Donald. You may feel good. You may feel strong. You may think you're handsome. But guess what? You can be killed. I 
I needed that. Show me the fire, Lord. Oh, there it is. All right, I, I get it. I get it. I get it. So that when he showed me a vision of me and this woman here, and he showed me another robe with a whole bunch of women on it, he said, that robe going to be short and fat, but that one is going to be long and skinny. I can continue down this road and have all your friends. You're going to die. You can get on this road, and I got a long life for you. You know, when I receive words like that from the Lord, there is a power here to keep me alive as long as I remain on this road. Did you hear what I just said? You can't kill me if God said I got a long life, devil. Did you hear what I said? And I'm doing the things that he is required of me. There is a power fighting for me. That even when the devil would take me out, the Lord would split the heavens and come down, allow me to see his face, and then say, it's not his time yet. And that shadowy figure that was lifting me, my spirit up out of my body to separate me from my body left when he spoke those words. Why did he let it happen? Let me read this verse. Hebrews 5 and 1 says, Every high priest is taken from among men and is ordained for men. Your priest, high priest in this case, taken from among men, ordained for men. Take you from among them, your purpose is for them. In things pertaining to God, that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sins. Who can have what compassion on the ignorant and on them who are out of the way for that he himself is also he himself also is compassed with what infirmity i can feel sorry for you because i also have weakness i know what it is like to be where you was so while i stand here and minister to you I can have compassion on you because I was right where you were. I know when you experienced suicide because guess what? I experienced a spirit that wanted me to kill myself too. Did you hear what I said? I know what it's like. See, some of this stuff God allowed us to happen because he knew people are going to run across your path that's going to also have the same thing. And I have given you the wisdom, the experience, and delivered you. You was among men, but I took you out. <laughs> and I ordained you for things pertaining to God. For men. See, you can't allow what you experienced in the past to define your today. You shake that foolishness off. You accept the blood of Jesus that have atoned for you. And then when somebody is standing in front of you that wrestle with the same thing you was wrestling with, now I know how to minister to you because I was right where you are and I'm going to use the power of God to bring you out. And I am a living testimony, a walking miracle to show you you can be free. Did you hear what I just said? You can hear what <laughs> Lord, I give you the praise for it. He himself is compassed with infirmity. He felt it. He know it. He need to be clean too. But my experience has allowed me to have a compassion. Lord, I give you the praise. You can approach them now with a soft touch that you may not have had except you've gone through. So I can really hug you and say, it's going to be all right. Jesus can deliver you. I'm a walking miracle. I am now where I am today by the power of God. But I was where you were, are. I was where you are, and God has set me free. Let's stand on our feet and get ready to go home. Amen. Why did he allow it to happen? Give you a wisdom about it give you a compassion about it. He pulled you from among men, ordained you for the things 
pertaining to God and then use you to minister to them. Did you hear what I just said? Lord, I give you the praise. I give you the praise. I give you the praise. Come on. Come on. How many of y'all going to use your testimony to destroy devils now? I'm going to use what I went through to destroy devils. I'm going to use what I went through to have compassion on people that's going through what I was in. I'm going to use that thing. I'm going to use that thing. I'm going to use it. Lord, I give you the praise. I give you the praise. I give you the praise. Come on. That divorce can help you to minister to somebody that was divorced. When they cheated on you, that can help you to minister to somebody that was being cheated on. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And you can tell them how you was broken, but then God gave you wholeness in him, and now you've been healed in your heart, and there is no more bitterness and strife anymore. I'm going to use what I went through. God will remove me from men, ordain me in things pertaining to God, and then allow me to have compassion on them because he let me go through it. Lord, I give you the praise. We worship you today, God. We worship you today for your wisdom and your power. You let us experience it, but it did not destroy me. Because you had a purpose that it would be for the glory of God did you hear what I just said it would be for the glory of God why old man are you born blind it's for the glory of God to teach men that Jesus is able to give someone who was blind sight come on now take your healing and allow it to be a testament of what God can do for a person Lord, I give you the praise. I'm not going to feel sorry for myself because of my past. I'm going to use it for what he gave it to me for. To give me a wisdom on how to come out of that thing. And to be a testimony. To share with others. Who go through the same things. Lord, I give you the praise. We worship you in this house. We worship you in this house. worship you in this house. Let's get ready to worship him. Anybody need a yeah, Lord, I give you the praise. Anybody need to be washed with the blood before we go? But Lord, we worship you for your goodness today. We worship you for your power today. I need to be washed with the blood. Let's, let's get washed before we go. Okay. Come on. Come on. I'm not going to feel sorry. I'm going to use what he allowed me to experience to sow in me compassion and a wisdom and an understanding had I not had except I'd gone through it. I can give it to you without you going through it, but it's not like having touched it yourself. I touched that thing. I slept outside on the street corners. I know what it's like. Lord, I give you the praise. So you'll be able to remember the restaurants that showed mercy on you and then the ones that ran you off. Lord, I give you the praise. Let's get washed by the blood. For every sin, we opened up this morning talking about the righteousness of God. We ain't going to believe our flesh. That's what try to condemn us when God says, you are my righteousness. And he put a crown on you and got a seat for you next to the Lord in heavenly places. I won't stand here condemned. Lord, I give you the praise. I want you to declare this with me. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Oh, Lord, I 
give you the praise. It's a bunch of white garments in here. Sometimes we condemn ourselves over our past. God, like what record? It was erased years ago. What are you talking about? Only thing I see is that you applied the blood 10 years ago and it's been gone ever since. What are you talking about? It doesn't even exist. in your Bible. It won't even be mentioned. Come on. So what are we repenting of today? Sin, guilt, condemnation, believing lies, feelings of unworthiness when God says you are a king or a queen and your garments are, are white and your record is clean. You might need to apologize for that. Lord, I've been holding myself guilty and you've been forgave me. My issue is I haven't forgiven myself. <laughs> Lord, I give you the praise, but I'm going to be forgiven today. Come on. I'm going to be forgiven today. I am going to be forgiven today. I'm going to release myself from the shame the disappointment. Lord, I give you the praise. You're worthy, God. You're so worthy. Let's pray this prayer and get it all under the blood. Father God, I come to you and I acknowledge my sin. But today, I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Come into my life. Change me. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. I accept your salvation and I accept that all of my sins have been put on Jesus and now I stand in your perfect righteousness in Jesus name amen amen glory be to God Lord we give you the praise today thank you for tuning in to the television broadcast of Bethel Christian Church with pastors Donald and Dana Hunter we hope this broadcast was a blessing to you and invite you to join us for the live worship experience at 1906 Beaumont Drive, Baton Rouge, Louisiana 70806 at 10 a.m. for Sunday services or online at www.bethelbr.net.